sensitives. Welcome back to the shop. I'm the Sith Smith, and today we're taking a look at my most recent project, Iron Man's Mark 41 helmet, inspired by Marvel's Iron Man 3. I'm going to walk you all through all the bells and whistles, but first I've heard your feedback and I've put together a montage of images showing how the structure for this helmet was made. Spoiler alert, it's tons of sanding, smoothing, and paint before we get to the electronics and fun. If you'd like to skip ahead past the building montage, go to the timestamp shown here. So one of the design parameters I laid out for uh, this build was to make this helm fit as tightly as possible. I wanted it to be small so it didn't look like I was a bobblehead when I put it on and walked around. Um, and so what I've got here is actually the motorcycle helmet that I bought for riding my bicycle um, out on the crazy bike paths where I live uh, to protect my head. And I've got them for a size comparison. I'll just show you. Uh, the Iron Man helmet is in fact smaller and tighter than my uh, professionally made and purchased motorcycle helmet, so I feel that's an accomplishment.
Okay, so here's a view from the underside of the helm. Um, as you can see, we've got our three main switches here. The red switch powers on uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero control board. Um, it also powers an unused socket, which was originally designed to run our Bluetooth speaker and microphone system. Um, however, when I ended up with the, the product, the, the Bluetooth product, uh, it didn't work with the original wiring diagram. So I went ahead and actually tucked away that second uh, power connection that comes off of this main power on switch. Uh, and it's not in use at the moment. It's just safely tucked away. Uh, next, we have our infrared LED switch. Uh, and then our, our daylight, our normal um, uh, lighting spectrum LEDs, and I will demonstrate those in a bit. But these are our, our manual switch plates here installed on the back so that you can reach around and easily access them um, with your thumb. Uh, we also have our charging port. This is uh, in at 5 volts and out at 5 volts uh, in case you need to take power from the helmet. Uh, and our battery pack is here tucked away. You can also see our Bluetooth speaker and coming down here is our Bluetooth microphone. Our other Bluetooth speaker is here on the other side and those are mounted at about temple level. Audio is really good. Um, and then here we've got the Raspberry Pi uh, Noir, the no IR filter camera. Um, and I will show you that and how it works too. So one of the things I really like about this helm is that the faceplate is removable. And um, this faceplate has, as you can see, magnets embedded. And those magnets line up with these magnets here that are embedded on the inside. Uh, and the magnet connection actually happens directly through the PLA, uh, and it works really, really well. Uh, you can see these magnets here, and it's the same sort of connection. There's a, a plate where it snaps right into place, and the magnet is on the other side of that to lock it in place once it snaps in. The faceplate itself doesn't have any electronics embedded into it. That was one of the things I wanted to do here um, in this in this first early design before I tried to embed electronics into the plate and have it still function with the helmet. I wanted to put everything into the helmet, just you know, make it as easy as possible for a round one. Uh, so what you see here is essentially just uh, some really cool sunglasses and some padding and some magnets mounted to the faceplate so that it snaps onto the component piece that holds all the electronics. So here we have our infrared LEDs. Um, uh, this was a, a custom designed and printed LED mount. Uh, I wanted to be able to feature as many LEDs as I could fit across the board here, so I, I essentially built it off of the helm part. Um, but it is uh, its own component piece that I then assembled after the helmet was put together. So here's a bit more of a close-up on the uh, full-spectrum light LEDs that I've installed uh, on both sides of the helm uh, here at the jaw light line. These are also custom, custom designed and printed um, uh, LED mounts that were, were designed to fit in the sockets that were pre-existing in the helmet design. These I can show you lighting up. So each of these full spectrum LEDs um, are three watts and uh, they emit light very brightly. Let's uh, try it first with the lights on and then I'll shut the lights off and show you how that looks. Okay, now let's see him in the darkness. As you can see, they light up the room really, really well.
All right, let's zoom in here quickly again to talk about the placement of the Raspberry Pi uh, No IR camera. So that is embedded here in the jaw piece. And it is at an angle such that it sees uh, pretty much what you're looking at through the eyes. So in the way of padding, I uh, actually used motorcycle helmet padding. Um, this piece in the back and this piece on the top. And that was really all that it took. This is actually made for uh, a chin piece. Um, but I had extras of these uh, laying around from that motorcycle helmet, the helmet that I showed you earlier. And so I used two of these pieces inside uh, exactly strategically where they needed to go uh, to make the helmet comfortable. You can find these individually online. I'll leave a link for this and all the other component parts down in the description. So one of the design parameters here for the Mark 41 helm uh, was to make it an IoT device. Uh, in other words, um, uh, accessible uh, and controllable over the internet. Um, and one of the ways to do this is to use a control board uh, running headless that you can access either uh, SSH or VNC protocols. In this case, I've chosen uh, VNC so that we can have a, a, a GUI graphical user interface for us to interact with. Um, and then I've also uh, run a program on the board, which I will link uh, down below in the description that uh, goes ahead and activates the camera as soon as, as the device boots up um, and broadcasts what the camera is seeing, as well as some limited controls for the camera to start um, recording in different ways, video, time-lapse, photos, uh, whatever you like. Uh, and some setting adjustments that you can access over a browser um, so that you don't need to actually VNC in in order to control the camera. You can do so from your phone or from your tablet. So I'll show you those things here. Um, to make this thing uh, IoT compatible and to still comply with all of the other requirements um, for, the, for this helmet, uh, I've chosen a Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, the reason being, it's the lightest weight uh, single board computer that I could find that has the necessary processing power, that has Bluetooth capabilities to interact with the headset. Um, it has uh, Wi-Fi so I can connect here on my local network um, and, and connect it to other pieces, um, other IoT devices, as you will. Um, and so a Raspberry Pi Zero is what I've used in this case, and I'm going to go ahead and boot it up when you're running a device like this headless. Of course, you don't have um, a display so you can't see the startup screen and let it load so I'm just gonna give this a couple of minutes to load here and we'll be back when I'm confident it's up and running okay so I gave it a minute to boot up and it should be booted by now uh, so what we're gonna do first is connect um, to see what the camera is looking at here and I've got that open in another window on my tablet Fresh there. Okay, so uh, as you can see on the screen, the latency is, is pretty good, actually. Um, and I'm gonna bring this closer so that we can check out some of the settings together that are available. So the first thing, if you just tap this, you'll see that you can get a full screen view on it. So that's nice. Let's go back to the options settings. Um, this particular program allows you to record video uh, or an image or time-lapse or to set for motion detection, um, or to stop the camera altogether. Uh, and then you can also download and access the images without ever having to go into the system. So I thought this was pretty cool. I'm gonna link this program um, down below. You can also get into the camera settings. Here, here we go. And there are lots of settings. I mean, you can set uh, the latency refresh rate. You can, you can, you, I mean, the options are limitless here. So I encourage you to play around. Um, yeah, so let's put this back in full screen. In fact, now that we've demoed that, I can go in. Let's look now at the VNC. So I'll open up my VNC window here, and I will connect to my pre-existing connection. And as you can see, I have uh, now a graphical user interface for the operating system that is running on the desktop. Um, so here we can do different things. We can connect to the Bluetooth, we can connect to the Wi-Fi, we can do all the setup uh, that we need to do to get this IoT device up and running so that it can then run headless uh, and be accessed in other ways without the GUI uh, while it's in use.
while we're here, this is kind of neat. Let's go ahead and power up the Bluetooth microphone. Power on. And here it can, is connected. There it goes. Now it's connected automatically. Um, so what we can do now is use that Bluetooth device. Um, obviously, it's got a microphone and speakers, so you can make calls over uh, applications like Google Voice, or uh, you can just listen to music like we're about to do now. I'm actually going to put the phone inside the helm so you can hear what it's like inside there. You know what? Let's get a view through it, too. Here we go. So that's a little bit of what it's like to uh, hear through the ears of the helmet and see through the eyes of the helmet um, and to see through the helmet's eye uh, uh, through the remote connection. Okay, so let's take a look at the infrared um, lights. So right now I have normal lighting on, just one light here in my shop so I can easily turn it off uh, and you can see how the camera is displaying. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my infrared illumination Okay, so the Hellman's IR LEDs should be on now, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the lights. And as you can see, it sees me in the dark. I mean, really well. Yeah, absolutely well. Cool stuff. Let's flip off those IR LEDs just to see the difference. Oh yeah, and now it's totally dark. You can't see anything at all. I'm, I'm back in front of the camera again. Crazy. Cool, so just to see, I'm gonna flip on now the daylight lights to see what the camera sees when those come on. Yeah, okay. Cool stuff, so it can see me, but Interesting, pretty cool. All right, a little bit more of a close up on the output display on my tablet of what that camera is seeing. And let's just move the camera. So the light moves with the camera. So that's it for the Mark 41 Bones Helmet. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Hit like, hit the subscribe button, tell your friends if you think this was cool, and we'll see you back for the next one.